Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. So now we are on to front sway bars and I'll definitely save this tool. Now I need to remove the wing so I can get to the rear suspension more easily. Easiest way to do that seems to just go for the lower mount. There's two screws, one on either side, which are very easy to get to if the wheels are off. So this just pops out. There's a little pin on either side. You just reach back here and spread it with your fingertip. We have front and rear to do, and I'm gonna need to remove this little nose piece here that is taped on. So we have a lot of little hardware parts. And I'm gonna have another tray going for the new stuff. Might as well just use that bag for the instructions for now. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start up front. I don't think I'm going to need the ball socket tool. So, um, in my first video on this car, I mentioned that there was a slot here, which looked like the perfect place for a, uh, a sway bar to be added. And uh, we have a pair of slots here in the A-arm and here. And there are two very small holes. Hopefully that is going to show on camera it's right there so um we have these two pieces here that have a little tab with a hole and then there's a hole in the top so we're going to be putting a ball stud into each of those and those will slide down into those slots and be anchored with a small screw So those will be our linkages there. And if you think that Mini Z parts are small, look at these grub screws. Oh my God, those are unbelievably small. Fortunately, we only have two of them to contend with, but wow. Okay, so um, let's just take a look at these ball studs here. They look like they're nicely polished and I'm running my fingernail across them I don't feel any ridges or anything so I don't think we need to do any prep on those so uh, part one of our assembly is to prepare our linkages for the front and the rear and then we're gonna prepare the tie rods for the front and the rear so before we even look down the instructions, let's focus in here, okay? So I need my little cutter out and I need to trim these. I do not recommend trying to twist them off or pull them off, cut them carefully. You do not want to damage that aperture there or you will not have a functioning setup. So these pieces here that have these holes in them, those are gonna be for our tie rods. One of these will be for the rear. One of these pieces will be for the front. These two ball cups here are for our rear sway bar linkages because we are gonna be putting a, screwing a ball stud into one of these two holes on either arm. The uh, sway bar will be in the rear uh, facing backwards so let's go ahead and take these ball studs and let's see what size they are okay it's not that one but it's close so it must be that one so I'll start them by hand and 
then use the wrench like that. Nope, it's not the right side. Now you want to make sure these are equal because on cars this small, everything has to be very precise. If things are even fraction of a millimeter different, you're going to have unusual handling characteristics. That is the biggest thing about Mini Z's is the precision. And it's actually a great way to get good at RC because if you can build Mini Z's and maintain them and learn to tune them well, when you start tuning 10 scale cars and uh, a scale cars, it's gonna be a piece of cake because the parts are so much larger, the tolerances are so much higher. Okay, those are two there. Um, I want to find something real quick. I knew I had these. Um, these are going to go on my uh, wheel nuts as my wheel nuts. So those will come in handy later. These are Yeah Racing product, two millimeter aluminum lock nuts in red, YA-056RD. They also come in blue, I think maybe orange. Um, your choice. I want to make sure these are going in straight. That's why I'm starting them by hand and not using the wrench. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off like that anyway. It's easy enough. Okay, touch down. Okay, so now we are going to prep the rods themselves. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and pull these two pieces. Always check your parts trees, make sure there isn't some little teeny part hanging on that you're going to toss. So it's easy enough to tell which is the thinnest versus the heaviest. I'll try the heaviest rearward one, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be coming back at it and uh, going to a medium because it's, it's pretty stout. So lightest for the front okay so to anchor those we need our 1.5 by 3.5 millimeter cap screws and we need four of them now those are the short ones we have these and you talk about precision um, let's look at that the way it's only threaded part way and it's smooth the rest of the way that's going to be for those little tabs for the front mounts these so that smooth part is where this piece is going to sit so it can move freely 
and I mean that's just incredible attention to detail and design. I really love the Mini Z's. So we need these two guys here and these two here. And we'll be needing those grub screws in just a minute. Those are going to be for tuning the tension on the uh, on the front sway bar. So I am just getting these started. Now we have two different pairs here. One pair, the screw comes in, let's say from above, uh, in the same direction as the ball stud, like this. And this other pair, they come from the side. So the rearward or the rear sway bar is the one where it comes from above and the top is the one where it comes from the side and they have us put the screw on the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that on as far as it'll go. And then we're gonna tighten it down. Like that, okay. So, let's see if those look level. Yep. Let me pause for a moment. Okay, and our rearward ones are going to go from above. So, again, we're going to slide the sway bar all the way in. And then we are going to anchor it with the set screw. That seems to have a bit of an edge from how it was manufactured. It's hard to see, but there's a little edge right there uh, from the cutting process. I'm going to go ahead and file that down. Okay, that should do. hard to hold on to this. There we go. I just need to be straight up and down. Okay. So we'll cross that bridge in a minute. Let's go to the front. But first, we need to get our grub screws set. So let's see, just wanna confirm with our directions here. We are going to remove these two button head screws. One here and one here. These look like our uh, diff covers. The front screws for the diff cover. And we are gonna replace those with a pair of two by nine countersinks, which are these two. And then we need to put our grub screws into these two holes. And once this plate 
clamps down on top of the sway bar, it's, the sway bar will be loose. We will use the grub screws to adjust it so it doesn't uh, flap around at all. But before we put that on, we need to pop these little guys into the ball sockets. Um, now, before I do that even, I am going to put the grub screws in place because it'll be a lot harder to start once this piece is attached to the car. Okay, I'm just gonna get them through to bottom like that. And then adjustment will be done from that point. I definitely recommend working over a tray or a dish, something that would catch these little grub screws if you drop them. Because if these fell into carpeting, you would probably never see them again. You might find them with a magnet, but it would be like looking for a flea in your carpeting. They are so itty bitty. Okay, great. So, take our sway bar and these two screws we're not going to need anymore. We're replacing those. Pop these little ball studs in. Make sure they move freely. There we go. So, probably need to Pull one of the front shocks aside. Might as well do both, it'll make it easier. Okay, now the trick is going to be to get those into the slots and I think what I'm also gonna have to do there is I'm gonna pull the shocks let's just do this the right way make it easy on us we're gonna go ahead and pull this screw for the front camber link pull the other camber link screw so I can fold those camber links up out of the way that okay so let's go ahead and put our sway bar in place Wow, okay, um, let's see. This is a good time for a pair of tweezers. Much easier. Okay, that's odd. Piece is a little misaligned there. Let me go ahead and unscrew this. It's the only thing I'm not a huge fan of with the Mini Z's is the 
black on black of everything and it can be hard to see stuff sometimes. There we go. So now we have a sway bar in place, as you can see, moves up and down. Now before I put in these pieces here, I want to tune the sway bars tension with those little grub screws. You want the sway bar to move uh, on its axis, but you don't want it to jiggle. Okay, good. So now, we can slide those little tabs into those slots and we are going to have to capture them with those screws with the long piece there. That is going to be harder to do than any other part of this process. Okay, let's try it this way. Let's get it into the slot. Then, let's try to position it approximately where that pin goes through. Work it around until we capture it. And I believe I am through, and I am. You don't have to tighten this down a lot, just get it to touch and we have one successful linkage right there so now time to do the other one the same way So now when we start to move one side, the other side also moves. That is exactly the kind of thing we want to see. Now we can put our linkages back in place, put our shocks back on, and we're ready to move to the rear. Okay, sorry about that. Missed one screw going in. To the other one. Not much to see. There we go. Always make sure everything is moving smoothly. You can't 
over tighten stuff on these cars at all if it if you get any kind of stiction you're gonna get really bad handling so that's what I want to see I want to move this arm and the other arm tries to move too this arm isn't drooping as easy let's try loosening the arm a little bit Could also be the sway bar is a little tight. Just those droops, no, oh, the grub screws a little bit. I may have to take this apart at some point and do a little work on it like um may need to polish these uh the king pins in here um because everything seems to be a little sticky this side not as much this side much more question is where let me start by pulling this screw here and we'll see if it's in the arm the arm seems to move free ah there we go For some reason, this camber link is really tight. Because that moves nice and free. I do not think I have a reamer small enough for that. And part of the problem is that they're using screws. So I'm running that in and out of there a few times. Let the threads of the screw kind of clean things up a bit. So it seems like that screw there is blocking a little bit. Okay. as good as I can get it right at the moment that's gonna need a little bit of love for sure down the road but it's better than it was okay that's better it's a lot better you see what I mean how these things are so precise you've really got to be on your game. So let's go ahead and screw these back in. Now, I know someone is going to probably put in a comment saying that, hey, why didn't you just pop the shock off at the top here? Because you can, because this Phillips head is just a ball socket. But this is, is nice and loose. And the more I pop that on and off, the faster that is going to wear out. And 
eventually that could get to the point where it pops off while running and I don't want that so I would rather take the extra moment to unscrew these versus having to buy a shot kit because you can't buy the miscellaneous parts you have to buy a full shot kit for all four and I'm not going to spend a hundred bucks on aluminum shocks it's just not necessary in fact some of the plastic shocks actually work better these teeny ones the um, for example the road car the MRO3 the rear shock the plastic one leaks less and maintains its uh, pressure better than the aluminum one so just you know food for thought so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the rear shocks since it made doing the front so much easier and if we're lucky I'm gonna be able to go out and set up the track I bought some more of that uh, green artificial grass indoor outdoor rubber back carpeting um, so I don't have to worry about using the rubber mats I can just go out roll out a bunch of the green stuff use some two by fours and two by twos and stuff to lay out a, a track and uh, drive like crazy have a good time so I'm gonna be doing a lot of driving so on to our rear so we need to remove two, three, four screws. And that's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Try to visualize how that goes on there. Okay, I see what how it works. So I need to gently move that out of the way. Okay, I was gonna th thinking I might want to take this off, but I don't think I'm gonna need to do that. I just need to pull these two screws out of here. Okay, those are gonna have uh, pass-throughs from these two holes. And then we gotta pull these two screws. So this is gonna drop under there. And then once those are in place, gonna be like we're gonna have our sway bar sit right in there and there's gonna be a pair of button heads that go in these two holes that don't go to any other body part uh, they just anchor our, uh, our sway bar down so the real trick here is going to be making sure we get the right sizes. So let's start by getting this into position here. Like so. And let's see which size screws do we use for the rearmost. 
Okay, two by eight. And those are buttons. and confirm these. <laughs> they, we do not have eights here for some reason. Um, maybe they forgot to put them in the bag. Oh, over here, sorry. Second tray. Okay, yeah, those are our two by eights. And here are the two by eight flatheads that we're gonna use up in front here. So. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Those are gonna be easier to do kind of upside down. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the flat heads here to do the uh, diff case top. I'm not gonna tighten them down too much, just loose fit so every I don't deform the plastic. Okay, now I need to get those two screws in the back there. And I think the easiest way to do that is gonna be to kind of hold the screw like this, flip the car upside down. There we go. Didn't have to go completely upside down, just turn it on its side. And remember, two fingers don't strip. Oh, I wish these were magnetized. That would make it a little easier. There should be, I should be able to do that. I just need a good magnet. Run it over the screwdriver shaft a few times. Okay. Let me check these. Yeah, there's a little stiction there, so let's try loosening these up like a quarter turn each. Yeah, see, movement. Let's go ahead and do this one a teeny bit also. See, and these screws are going into plastic. They're not gonna unwind on you. So don't be afraid to loosen certain things a teeny bit because you, you need stuff to be able to move that freely. If it doesn't, you're gonna have steering problems. I'm surprised the car ran as well as it did with the stiction that was up front. Okay, so. This, go, this is gonna be hard to do. Okay, I see. Um, I'm gonna need to the inside ones would have been easier. Uh, let's do these two camber link screws, just like we did up front. Gotta watch out for those dog bones, make sure they get back in place. And if you look, there are small O-rings in there. That's a very nice little detail. And I don't have one on this side. That's odd. Why didn't they do that? And there's none in there, but those are plastic. So, but uh, having little O-rings like that makes your dog bones stay better. I'm just 
just looking to see if maybe one fell out. No, I think they just left it out when they did the assembly. Damn. These drive shafts feel like uh, plastic. I think they are. Which is not a problem. The amount of load they take is very minimal. Okay, let's get this in place and get these things back in. So, what I need to do is just drop this under there like that. And now I can put these back. Okay, so now I need these teeny little screws here. Oh. Where did that go? Okay, let me get the other one in. I'm gonna be looking for that little screw for an hour. just have to use one of the longer ones. I think it'll be okay. But I may have lost that. Okay. I think the longer screw has enough pass through down there so it's not going to run into anything. Didn't have a good grip with the tweezers and it acted like a spring. So note to self and to everyone out there, be careful how you do that. We need the sway bar to move freely, but not be tight. I think that's good. We are almost done. So now we need to pop those little linkages on there. And looks like the outer holes are going to be the way to go there. Yeah, the inner ones are going to be kind of towed in. go. One and one to go. And two. Aha, uh -huh. I have it upside down. No, I don't. Yeah, no, I've got it right. I was thinking maybe I had the sway bar upside down, but it does do what it's supposed to do. It's a little tight. Of 
clearances are really low on there, but it's a Mini Z. What do you want? Okay, we have front rear sway bars and we have a protective front plate. And I can stick this little piece back on here. I don't know how long that's gonna stay, but Okay, so we've got that nice protective plate to help uh, brace the front of the chassis where it's weakest. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use some better two-sided tape than that. Okay. Are these not glued on? Wow, they're not. Okay. I may do that. ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.